Welcome back to Squawk on the Street. Rick Santelli here. You know, the president's budget was released last week, and I don't think it's going to pass. But I will tell you, there's, there's issues, caps, retirement caps embedded in this. I would have never guessed. I would have thought that in the end, IRAs and their tax deferral status would have been something the government may have used to try to draw people into buying more treasuries when quantitative easing ended. But it seems though tax revenues are more important. Our guest, Brian Graff, is an expert on pensions and retirement. Welcome, Brian. Hi, Rick. Glad to be with you. All right. I guess, first of all, uh, tell us your impression if these were these caps were to somehow find their way into the legislative process and pass, what does it mean and what does it also mean that deferred compensation is excluded? Clear us up on those two issues. Sure, Rick. I mean, it's really a terrible proposal because what it does is it kind of punishes a small business for doing the right thing all the way along. Small business owners and retirement plans, as you know, are subject to very strict contribution limits. They're subject to very complicated non-discrimination rules that require the small business owner to make contributions on behalf of their workers like matching contributions and other contributions in order for the small business owner for himself or herself to get a, any benefit out of the plan and what this proposal basically says is okay small business owner you've been playing by the rules you've been complying with these limits you've been complying with these non-discrimination rules and oh, sorry you're a successful investor you're out of luck you can't save anymore once you hit this cap and the, and the problem the real policy problem is those small business owners are going to say well, the heck with this. I can't get anything out of this. I'm going to shut this plan down. And what that means is these small business workers are going to lose out in having a plan. And what we know is that people making between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, when they're covered by a plan, over seventy percent of them save for retirement. But when they don't have a plan at work, less than five percent of them save. They're more, they're fifteen times more likely to save when they have that plan at work. And if you take the incentive for the owners to have it, the plan goes away. All right, now, real quickly, in about 40 seconds, tell me uh, what deferred compensation is for our viewers and that it is exempt and who uses those plans the most. Is it politicians? Is it billionaires? You tell me. Rick, you know, you're exactly right to bring that up because that's what's so arbitrary about this proposal. It applies to regular plans that people, you know, average Main Street folks have when they go to work. It doesn't apply to executive deferred compensation plans that CEOs and presidents of Fortune 500 companies have. Those plans are exempt from this proposal. And you've got, you know, folks like the CEO of Walmart that has over $60 million in a deferred comp program. Well, that doesn't, this $3 million cap doesn't apply to them. The president's own pension is exempt from this proposal. That's worth about $5 million. So, that, you know, these exec plans are not touched for whatever reason, but no, they go after the Main Street plan that everybody play, that everyone participates in, and in fact, benefits more workers than anything else. Eighty percent of well, the listen, people. Brian, in Brian, we're kind of out of time here, and I am okay. definitely going to bring you back. It really is eye-opening, and it goes right back to a quick theme, and that is the reason, in my opinion, our economy has always been the best is that there's general guidelines everybody follows that don't change. This, along with many things since the crisis, just discombobulate a lot of different issues and unintended consequences. Absolutely. Brian, thanks for being our guest. Thank you. And Carl, back to you. All right, Rick, thanks so much for that. Rick Santelli. We'll get the European close.